guess what? We're in the last chapter of Maze, chapter 17. And I uh, hope you've been enjoying these readings. This is um, part one of chapter 17. After this, I'm going to be reading one of my other books, um, probably Girl Without Borders. So I've really enjoyed this process anyways. Here's part one of chapter 17. Things got worse. I could see a change come over Mays. His easy and gentle way with me disappeared and was replaced by a baiting paranoia. We hadn't raised the subject of Kel and what had happened in a while, but leaving it at the breakpoint wasn't any better. He stopped speaking to me except to ask me questions I should not have to answer, like where was this or that thing he was looking for, asked in a way of suggesting that I had taken it and had it in my possession. Like I would be holding on to a skate key. Why? I didn't even own a skateboard. I could help him look for it, I offered, but he sneered at me as though I were pretending to be nice and pretending to want to help look for it when all along I was hiding something from him. If it wasn't that, it was something else. If I got offended or tried to argue, he would ask me with a biting tongue, why are you so defensive? It's because you're guilty, isn't it? You know where it is and you don't want to tell me. You just want to watch me suffer. If walls could talk, they would say, what nonsense. But even the walls wouldn't come out and defend me, goddamn drywall. I was guilty until proven innocent. And all because of the way I made him feel. Well, he wanted me to feel the same. So I would have to make some sacrifice to preserve what we had. I would be a good girl and keep my mouth shut and fidget with a needle and thread, sew the corners of the patches back into his jeans, ask for some quarters and take them down to the vending machine incognito to get us some Agent Orange, sew my mouth shut in the corners of the patches holding our relationship together by a thread, anything, because I loved him, air dropping water to douse the fire, anything. I can't lose this. And yes, it was humbling, and no, I didn't know any other way. I would put on his clothes and a hat and some sunglasses until I looked like the invisible man, then try and walk like I thought a man would, pulling my shoulders out in front of me, towing my ass in from behind, stepping from the outside in, grabbing my crotch or whatever, then take the stairs one step at a responsible time, brushing past the hollows like ferns in the halls. Luckily, my secret favorite was the only one around today. She looked at me kind of funny as I walked past her and slid the quarters into the slot for some famous Amos and Sunkist. It was early in the morning and she had just arrived to work. The men had not shown up yet. I wouldn't say anything, I decided. I shouldn't worry her to betray her office and would take my handful of rations back up to the paranoid god and lay my offerings upon his bed, praying for peace. And he would see them and pick them up and start eating without saying a word to me, saving me none, just looking at me like Hunter S. Thompson out of the corner of his eye, lost in some acid trip and miles away. Maybe the sugar would knock him back to his senses. I would try to pretend as though I were calm and unaware of his suspicions, but this too could set him off and make him even more suspicious. Why are you being so nice, he would demand to know. Because I am nice, I would say. That's what nice people do. They be nice. <laughs> 